what is going on guys Mike Leski here um, yeah I know I haven't done anything on YouTube in a while just I haven't cared and uh, I know a lot of my videos got put to private uh, I just got a new job and didn't think it was best for me to be easily accessibly slugging bourbon and cussing it and calling people shitheads and stuff but uh yeah, whatever. I'm gonna go through and systematically kind of unprivatize some of the ones that are uh, some of the ones that had more views on them. Like uh, I did a video on like SBD knee sleeves. It went like fucking viral right after they came out. And then like um, I got another video on like hook grip technique and stuff like that. I'll probably I'm, I'm definitely gonna go back through and fix those at some point. But for now, I'm gonna start making a couple new videos here and there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, just I get. <sighs> I've, I've had, I've just had some issues in the past that I'm getting over with now. The last two surgeries have been absolutely brutal. So, uh, for those that are unaware, two Augusts ago, <laughs> I had a torn labrum that I had to get a bunch of metal anchors put into to just keep my shoulder and shit together. That really slowed down training and everything for a while. And then, uh, that finally started feeling better. I did a meet. I was feeling great. And I only totaled like 1,600 in the meet, which is less than I totaled in my first competition ever, uh, but whatever, I was, I was feeling better, and then all of a sudden my fucking knee started swelling up, and I don't know what the hell it is, I didn't bang it, nothing hurt, nothing popped, so I just kind of ignored it, just started doing some rehab stuff around it, and it wasn't getting better, go to find out, I have zero articular cartilage left in my, in my knee joint at all, so that issue was from a, uh, uh, I have this weird genetic defect in my kneecap that's basically just sheared all the cartilage off from behind it ever since I've been able to walk pretty much. So it was it was a clusterfuck. Like the MRI and stuff, they felt there was some good usable tissue left when they actually went in there for the surgery. It was, it was just like floating in the right place. It wasn't even connected to anything. So uh, the surgery I got done, I had an option of either getting a total knee replacement, which I'm 33 years old. I, I don't want to get a total fucking knee replacement. Uh, or I could do a cartilage transplant. So I, I, I opted for that one. So it's kind of part of um, it's part of a clinical trial thing that they're running. So I got this cartilage transplant from 16 cadaver donors. So they literally went and scraped all of my shit out, pulled my kneecap out of the way, and rebuilt everything out of uh, out of new dead people parts. Uh, so then I go back and I get some uh, Synvis, and I've gotten like PRP injections and stuff, and those have been awesome. Uh, I've actually got another one today, as a matter of fact, and it's just how that shit isn't readily available to everybody is, is beyond me. It's a fucking miracle, but there's all kinds of shit that the FDA keeps from people for some reason. Like I would, I would, I want to just be able to go to CVS and buy like how you can go get those like magnesium salt baths and stuff. I want to have a just a fucking bag of stem cells that I can just open up and put into a bathtub. But uh, whatever, that probably won't happen anytime soon. Uh, anyway, so just kind of with with all that stuff, I've been getting back into heavier training, and uh, just wanted to kind of outline what my training looks like right now. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. Most people watching this probably know I'm a big fan of West Side conjugate training and stuff. Um, just the higher frequency, trendy bullshit people are doing is is hurting more people than it's helping really because they have no idea what the fuck they're doing. So that's another thing. Um, I, I did DUP training for a couple of years, and I did it really well, and Dr. Zordas helped me out and stuff, and it was spot on. It was awesome, but there's there's very specific things that he was helping me do better than the majority of people fuck up. So uh, I'm just going to do some more videos on information on that, how to lay that out, how to actually track work and progress and figure and shit out on your own. But anyway, uh, my training right now is uh, I just switched over into more of a uh, like a transformation block like a not a transformation block Jesus Christ an intensification block um, I've basically been doing nothing but higher volume stuff for the last couple of months because I haven't been able to do anything too heavy so uh, uh, basically I have a max effort day where I'm doing a max effort deadlift or a good morning because I can get away with those without my knee feeling like it's gonna just fucking explode out from underneath of me uh, and then I have a dynamic effort day for speed pulling, for speed deadlifts. Um, I also have a maximum effort day for benching, and then a dynamic effort day for benching too. I've been able to get away with benching for a while, and that's actually, just focusing on that has actually been pretty awesome. My bench has always been my shittiest lift, 
uh, my stroke and my timing on it's gotten so much better. My elbow movement is like just fucking, it, it's been flawless the last couple of max effort days I've had. So uh, hopefully, hopefully I can just keep that, keep that momentum rolling there. Uh, getting down to like the nitty gritty parts of it. So let's start with dynamic effort bench day. Uh, before, in the previous block, I was messing around just cramming tons of barbell volume in, uh, which a good rule of thumb for the conjugate training stuff is you want about 20% actual barbell work, then about 80% specialized volume work targeting weak points. And uh, that's, that's a pretty good rule. You, you might be able to push it to 40, 60, but odds are uh, most people could really, really benefit from spending some time just beating the shit out of the stuff that they suck at. There's, I mean, that's, that's really, it's really great. You can only get, you can only get so strong just using a barbell, I think. Um, what the fuck do I know? <coughs> um, so yeah, yeah. So with, uh, with the previously, with the way I was loading bench in the accumulation block is I was doing a bunch of cluster sets. Uh, so I do 12 to 15 of these cluster sets where I basically just, one set would be I'd lay down, grab the you know middle of the bar, grab a really close grip, do three reps, rack it, do a medium grip, three reps, rack it, do a wide grip, three reps, rack it, and then that was one cluster set. So I mean you're doing a shitload of work with it, but uh, I'd keep the bar weight around 30 to 40 percent, and just kind of mess around with different band tensions, like a quadded red band or like a red short band and a green short band, just whatever, just kind of changing around each week. Um, just as long as it was moving fast, that was all I cared about. And as long as I was like a little tired by the end of it, that's all I was shooting for. Just like accumulating a little bit of fatigue by the end, but everything was still going, going pretty fast. Um, now that dynamic effort bench is switching over to, um, just more of like a speed strength, like a regular speed strength kind of thing. The tension I'm using now is a, uh, I've got one of those access, uh, up at Iron Strong in Salisbury here. I've got access to one of the west side louis design rogue benches one of like the cage half cage bench things whatever the fuck it's called i don't know um so those were great for short bands uh, and I've, I've never really benched with short bands consistently but anyway so um loading that up uh just using a red short and a green short band and then keeping the uh waving the bar weight from around like 35 to 45 maybe go up to 50 percent um and i'm a big fan every once in a while taking about like a little bit, like add a little bit, like add like 20% more volume to your workout and then try to do like a couple heavier singles and stuff, just nothing, just keep going until the bar speed slows down. Um, and it, that's just fun to do against bands anyway. That's just a fun thing to do. Uh, but I mean, it's not a given, you don't have to do that or anything. I don't want to fucking do anything. Um, and then previously in the accumulation block, I was going straight to some kind of uh, just dumbbell, dumbbell work. Like I would set up an incline, like a slight incline, grab the 90 pound dumbbells, do three sets to failure or something like that. Then the next session I do the same thing on a flat bench or, you know, or on like a super steep incline or a floor press, like whatever. It'd be some kind of, some kind of heavy dumbbell work for as many reps as I could do with the heaviest weight I could hold on to pretty much. Um, after that, just jumping straight to some kind of dumbbell, either, uh, either a dumbbell or a barbell tricep extension. Uh, normally, Normally I just load a weight on and do four or five sets for as many possible reps as I could and just don't even fucking count it. I don't even care. Um, after that, oh shit, still here, didn't crash. After that, <laughs> um, after that on, on every bench day, I always go, I always go to pull-ups. Uh, sometimes if I'm feeling really good, I'll throw in some kind of one arm row, but I'll normally save that for deadlift days for like uh, horizontal rowing and stuff like that. It kind of mimics the, the deadlift helps the lockout a little bit more. Um, but, uh, yeah, then normally just finish up with like a couple rounds, almost like a little circuit of some kind of like other tricep isolation, some kind of like lateral real rear and front raise. And then, um, yeah, some kind of bicep, uh, some kind of bicep work. I've been doing my, my super highway to great guns program at the end. Um, it's the fastest way to, to the super highway, uh, totally constructed out of, uh, peaking glorious biceps. But uh, that'll be that'll be a whole other video all by itself. Maybe I'll make an ebook about that. Uh, so anyway, those were the accumulation days. So tr switching over from that dynamic bench accumulation day to a dynamic bench intensification day, there's only a couple little things I've changed to make it a little bit more intense. So like I said, I'm doing the red band uh, and the green band on the bar. Uh, so a little bit more band tension than I was probably dealing with before, and plus the the percentage of the bar weight's gone up, but I've dropped the cluster sets. Now, the first exercise I go to immediately after that 
is uh, some kind of barbell press for tons and tons and tons of reps. So like, um, so basically I've just ditched the dumbbell work for some kind of straight barbell work. Like, um, um, a good one is just like leaving, like taking the bands off the bar, grabbing a two board, putting on somewhere between like 50 and 75%, 75% of my best straight bar max uh, with a pause and then just doing four sets of as many reps as I can off that two board with a close grip. Um, just, just something super high, crazy volume, and then just, uh, move on again, still going to that isolated tricep exercise and everything else is pretty much the same. So the only thing that really progresses for my dynamic bench days are, uh, just exactly how the volume is accumulated for the banded pressing. And then just whatever, you know, specificity of that following exercise. So it's like dumbbells kind of early, early on in training, and then it switches over to a straight bar. And then more and more as the and more and more as like a competition gets closer, that'll just be straight up close grip bench pressing for full range of motion. Um, for just all kinds of different sets and reps and stuff. So for um, a dynamic lower day, since I can't do squats, if I could, normally I'd always do squats, then always do banded deadlifts and stuff. Uh, there's two ways I like to just rotate speed deadlifts with no rhyme or reason or anything. I just change it up when I get bored, honestly. Um, the first way is keeping the bar weight between 40 and 50% and using the same band tension and then just waving the weight each week, you know, going 41 week, 45, 50. Keep just making sure the bar speed stands super, super fast. So do it anywhere from six to 12 singles, whatever. It just depends on how beat to shit you feel from the other stuff that you did. Um, or the other way I like to load it with bands is uh, keep the same bar weight for three weeks and then actually go through and rotate um, rotate band tensions and stuff around. So uh, just two, two different ways you can do it. Then anytime on speed day, um, I did this even when I could squat, but uh, anytime on speed day, I just like to go uh, the fi- the next exercise if both those get done is somewhere um, some kind of barbell deadlift variation for like a six to a ten rep max somewhere around there. So I mean, there's so many options for that. You can do good mornings. You can do snatch grip deadlifts. You can do uh, RDLs. RDLs the most underrated fucking exercise of all time. RDLs if you do them right make your fucking bench press better. Um, <clears throat> but. Uh, yeah, you're just going to that, hitting some kind of 6 to 10 rep max on there, constantly trying to push the weight, constantly switching those exercises around. Uh, from that point, it just turns into almost like a leg bodybuilding day for me. Just tons and tons of uh, single leg squats, tons of single leg RDLs and stuff. Um, just doing TKEs throughout the whole entire workout. Uh, tons of core shit at the end, a lot of like standing core work with a neutral hip, like suitcase deadlifts, pal off presses. Uh, front squat hold shit like that um, just just anything 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 you can load and have to get tension be tight stand tall and shit like that is just is just gonna be so much better for the power lifts um, always always end with some kind of grip work I got my captains of crush grippers in my gym bag all the time I've got um, uh, a bunch of stuff from iron mine like those uh, finger extension straps and stuff and I love doing plate pinches and just heavy bar holds you just got that's one thing, being so beat up. I think my nervous system forgot how to fucking lift weights, so now my hands don't work anymore. Um, but yeah, so that's really that's really about it for my dynamic days. Uh, this ran a little bit longer than I thought. I'm going to do a part two on how I set up my max effort days right now. Thanks for watching.